Jay Parr, and I'm uh, humbly serve as the chair of the Democratic Party here in Parker County. Woo! And I'm taking pictures of all of you. I expect to see you in my office as volunteers to help us uh, uh, get out the vote to make sure that we get the change that's badly needed here in Texas. We have a few dignitaries here with us today that I would like to introduce. Uh, Carla Schoonover Porter from Palapinto County. She's the Democratic Party Chair there. Uh, Adrian Martin from Hood County. She's back over here. And, um, and also we have Rhonda Harris from, uh, from Jack County. And uh, please come out. We are all going to be working hard as boots on the ground, and, and so please come out and help us as we move forward. Um, we're so fortunate today to have with us someone who cares about every Texan, whether they are from an urban area or whether they live in a small red county like ours. So, uh, you know, this is a man that needs no introduction, so I'm going to give you over to uh, the next governor of Texas. Okay, how's everybody doing? We, we may need some volume on this one, and I'm gonna just uh, get your help, Cynthia, with this wire. There we go. All right, I'm gonna stand up here so that I can see everybody. Thank you all for coming out today. So grateful to be with you. To uh, our chairwoman, Kay Parr, thank you for helping to organize this and bringing so many great people out. To Brenda Jurgens, who is our all-time hero, absolutely tireless in reaching out to voters. Thank you for everything that you've done to connect us all today. We are so grateful that you came out and that you braved, the, braved these Arctic temperatures that are, that are blowing into Texas right now. Here we are almost in, uh, in April, and we're having to wear jackets and sweaters, and uh, I saw some poor guy who doesn't have a jacket on. He said, I thought this was going to be indoors, Beto, and, uh, and it's not. Can you all still hear me? There we go. Um, so thank you all for being here. It, it really, literally warms our heart to be with so many good people, and to feel so much love and support from those in a county that is far too often overlooked by Democrats and taken for granted by Republicans, leaving go. people functionally go. unrepresented in their governments. And if we're gonna get this right, we can't just talk about it. We've gotta show up. We've gotta walk that talk and make sure that we understand that everyone counts, everyone's important. No one can be written off and no one can be taken for granted. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to keep my comments under about 15, 20 minutes max, and then we're gonna turn the microphone over to you, and Cynthia, who's at the back, is gonna uh, take a microphone around, and we're gonna take any questions, any comments, any suggestions, any ideas that you might have. But I wanna begin with this. I could not help but notice that there were a few people who are still really, really excited about uh, Donald Trump as, as we're, we're driving in. Hey, and that, that, no, no, let's, let's not boom. Those, those are our fellow Americans. Those are our fellow Texans. They live in this community. Their kids go to the same schools that your kids go to. We worship in the same churches or temples or choose not to worship at all, whatever that is. But we're together, right? And, and we're at a time where this state and this country has never been more divided or fractured or polarized, at least not in our lifetimes, right? You'd have to go back to maybe the 1860s to find a time where we were this badly divided. And we've gotta find ways and reasons and issues that can bring us together because it's the only way that it's gonna work. It cannot be our way or the highway. When we win this race, right, there's a good chance that we're gonna be working with a Republican majority legislature. And I cannot come back to you at a meeting like this one and say, folks, look, I, I talked about all these great things we were gonna do, I made all these promises, but I wasn't able to deliver because these stinking Republicans, they stood in our way and they just wouldn't move, and so just keep reelecting me and one of these days we're gonna get something done. No, we've gotta get this done right now. We've gotta find 
that common ground. We've got to look for consensus. And look, I know this is a four-letter word for many people in politics today, but we also have to be open to compromise, right? So, so let me tell you this. The three things that define this campaign, the three things that we want to do together when we elect me governor as this state are things that will bring Texans together. It's, it's, it's the issues that you're not going to find much argument from Republicans or independents or Democrats on. Let me give you an example. Issue number one is jobs. We want to make sure that the best jobs in America are created right here in the state of Texas. And anyone working full time doesn't work a second or a third job, isn't dependent upon public assistance, isn't sleeping in a shelter or on the side of the road, as we know is the case with far too many of our fellow Texans, including those veterans who serve this country right now. So how are we going to do that? Well, what if we invested in the higher education of any young person or any older person who's lost their job or is returning to the workforce so that they can go to Weatherford College, get that associate's degree, that skill training, so they're competitive for those living wage, high paying, high value, high skilled jobs. I'd love to see that right here in Parker County. Yeah. Or, yesterday, we were, uh, yesterday we were in uh, an IBEW training center. And uh, here we were in Tarrant County meeting with these apprentices who are in a five-year program, uh, after which they're going to be earning $60,000 and then moving on up $70,000, $80,000. You're a master foreman as an electrician. You're making $130,000, $140,000 right here in the state of Texas. You're not working a second or third job. You're creating more jobs for our fellow Texans. Now, that's not something that Democrats believe in or Republicans believe in. Just as Texans, we believe that there should be that opportunity to work that living wage job that gives you purpose and function in your life. I was talking to one of the young apprentices, and he said, hey, Beto, you keep talking about jobs. This is a career for me. This is a calling. When I get up in the morning, I am so damn excited to go out onto that job site and then come here to this training center to get better and better at what I do. I love that. So issue number one, jobs. Issue number two, we today do not have the best system of public education in America. In fact, when you compare us to California or Florida or North Carolina, New York, Illinois, any one of our peer states, over the last seven years that Greg Abbott has been governor, they have been doing better while we have been doing worse. Now, that's not an indictment on our kids or their parents, nor those school teachers who too often are working that second or third job to make ends meet. In Parker County, the average teacher is underpaid by about 7,500 bucks against the national average for teachers. And that means that those classroom instructors, those counselors, those librarians, the people who make public education possible have a reason to maybe leave that profession after two years of a pandemic and a recession and a governor who's constantly attacking them based on what they're trying to teach in the classroom or asking them to turn in the parents of transgender students who might be in front of them, it is no wonder that we're losing one third of Texas school teachers within the first five years that they join the profession. What if instead of doing all that, we paid these teachers enough so they never work a second job, we show them the respect that they deserve, we cancel the star test this year so there's no more high stakes, high pressure in their lives, and we make sure that we treat them as the professionals that they are, able to make the decisions that they need to in the classroom. Look, they didn't do it for the money or the fame or the glory. They answered the call. They were responding to the need to deliver for these kids and unlock a lifelong love of learning within them. Let's allow them to do that. That's how Texas goes from nearly dead last in performance in so many of these categories, like having seven out of 10 fourth graders unable to read at grade level to becoming the best in the nation in public education. We can get behind that, right? That makes sense. And then this one, um, and, and again, this is one I've heard from Republicans and Democrats alike. Um, they can all get behind it. What if we expanded Medicaid in the state of Texas so more people could see a doctor 
fill a prescription. Hey, Cynthia, I don't know if we can do anything with the sound. Uh, fill a prescription, take their child to a therapist in a state where the largest provider of mental health care services right now is the county jail system, where you've got people with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and clinical depression getting arrested on purpose far too often to be taken to the one place that they don't have insurance, where they're guaranteed the care that they would otherwise be denied. That is so immoral. It is so expensive against the alternative of just taking yes for an answer, the 90 cents on the dollar that the federal government will pay if we will take Medicaid expansion. And the kicker, K, K Parr said, please Beto, make sure you talk about property taxes when you come to Parker County today. The kicker on this is when we take that $10 billion a year additional, and bring it into our communities from the federal government, you are no longer paying for uncompensated care at your public hospitals through your property tax bill. We will lower property taxes in Texas as a result. And, uh, and those three things, that, that's it. When you leave this and your, your spouse or your kids or your parents or your colleagues or your classmates say, what is this Beto guy all about? I hear these ads from Abbott trying to scare me about him. Um, he's coming to turn our state into Venezuela. Um, I don't know how you do that, by the way, but I'm not interested. Um, you say, look, he talked about great jobs, world-class schools, and the ability to see a doctor and just be healthy enough and well enough to live to your full potential. That's it. And for those of you who are willing to volunteer for us and to knock on doors and to reach out to those voters, that's the message that I want you to share. We don't need any more division, any more culture wars, any more being at each other's throats or pitted against one another right now. This campaign has to be about all Texans. Republicans are welcome. Independents, we want you here as well. And Democrats, we got to get after it and go do it. But if we're going to get this state on the right track and do these three things, we've got to get past the man who's in this position of power right now and is abusing it to harm our fellow Texans. And we've got to ask ourselves how much better we would be if we were able to make this change. Imagine if, instead of attacking those transgender kids and their families who are navigating some really tough issues in their lives, we instead focused on child protective services and the 30,000 foster kids in this state who are being abused and trafficked in state care 23 of them lost their lives in state care over the last two years. Hundreds have been trafficked for sex. Literally, their bodies rented out to other people while they were in our custody and care in the state of Texas. And this is not a new problem. For the last six years, they've been warning the governor that kids come out more damaged from that system than when they first went in. And after six years, the judge who's been working on this issue says it has gone from bad to worse. We will be judged by how we treat the most vulnerable, the least de de defendable among us, these young kids who are in harm's way right now. As governor, I'm gonna make sure that they are a priority. Imagine if instead of attacking women and preventing them from making their own decisions about their own bodies and putting a $10,000 bounty on the back of anybody who assists any woman, we guaranteed in Texas that every woman makes her own decisions about her own future and her own health care and her own body. Imagine if instead of allowing the power grid to fail when the temperature drops and literally not being able to keep the lights on in the energy capital of the world and taking millions of dollars of campaign contributions from the energy CEOs who made billions of dollars in illegal profits last February? What if we instead of that fixed the grid and instead of asking you to pay higher utility bills, which everyone is right now in Texas, we call that the Abbott tax because you're footing the bill for what those billionaires stole from us. What if we fixed the grid? What if we connected ERCOT to the national grid so we could draw down power whenever we needed it and lowered your utility bills in the bargain? We can do that, but we've got to get past this moment. And this is what I'm going to close with. This is not up to me. It's not up to the Democratic Party. This one is on all of us. And for those of you who are tempted to doubt or to even despair, if we listen too much to the pundits and the prognosticators and even some members of the press who say, hey, this is unwinnable, they can't do it. The future, as uh, our honorary fellow Texan Joe Strummer of the Clash said, is unwritten. 
It is up to us to determine our future, our fortune, and our fate. And it's not just coming out to events like this one. It's not just what we share on social media. It is connecting with the people in Parker County, face to face, eyeball to eyeball, showing up at their door and having this conversation from your own heart and in your own words, and you define what is possible right here. In 2018, we won together 9,955 votes, mas o menos, here in Parker County. Since then, there are almost 10,000 new voters who've come to this county or aged into the rolls or have been naturalized right here in Weatherford or other parts of Parker County. In other words, these voters, primarily young, and we saw a 500% increase in young voters in 2018. These young voters, if we will go out there and listen to them first, and then talk to them about what we can do, and then connect the dots on how voting in this election produces the change that we want, we could double our vote performance here in Parker County. Are you all willing to help me to do that? Yeah. Well, if you have not signed up already, uh, we've got volunteers who are around who will sign you up to become one of those volunteers yourself to knock on those doors and to make that difference. And you can always go to Beto for Texas to sign up there or to learn more about what we're doing. With that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Cynthia and over to you, and, uh, and then we'll take your questions. All right, if you have a question, Thank you, everybody, for coming out. And I will come to you right over here. I'll repeat the question, by the way, for anyone who doesn't hear it. Great. So the, the question was about homeschooling and about public education and about standards and oversight and, and accountability. And listen, I, I'm, I want to learn as much as I can from those who are homeschooling their kids right now about how we can make it better, make sure that those kids are having a great experience. But even more than that, I want to make sure that our public schools are the destination of choice for parents who do have a choice, who could homeschool, who could send their kid to a private school. And I want to make sure they are the best possible option for kids who have no choice, whose parents couldn't afford private schools, or who live in a rural county where the public school is the only option. That's why I want to make sure, as governor, that we invest in schools. And listen, the technology, the infrastructure, the building, all that stuff is important. But it pales in comparison to the importance of that teacher and instructor and that educator who's in the classroom with those kids. They are like gold to the state of Texas, and we've got to treat them that way. And I'm confident if we do, and if we listen to them, and if we follow their lead, we're going to improve public education in the state of Texas, and that will be the destination of choice for almost every parent. Ms. Connell. Uh, first of all, anybody that's a Clash fan is a fan. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That was really cool. Uh, this is a diverse crowd, and I have to say, uh, I think a lot of us are looking for a torchbearer of compassion, especially given the cruelty in American politics now. So my question on behalf of everybody here is, how can we help you revitalize the system with empathy? I love this question. Thank you so much. Listen, you, you all lead on this by example. Um, we know there's some folks who may disagree with us, who may not vote for me, who may not see eye to eye with us on the policy issues. Some of them are here right now, and I, and I love that they're here. The fact that we can still pull this off 245 years into the experiment, this is the exception on planet Earth right now. And, and we can see that in Ukraine as autocracy tries to invade democracy and to destroy it. We know that over the course of world history, that democracy, the ability to freely choose those who will represent us, to have a say in the course and direction that your community, your state, your country takes, 
it flourished for a little while, 2,500 years ago, and then was extinguished from the planet until it reemerged here in the United States of America, deeply, imperfectly at first. But it had been getting better. It had been expanding. It had been enlarging. It had been representing and reflecting more of our Americans year by year, decade by decade, certainly after our fellow Texan LBJ signed the Voting Rights Act into law in 1965. But for the first time since then, this window of opportunity, this ability to demonstrate compassion through our democracy and peacefully listen to one another, engage in civil debate and dialogue, and then find the best possible solution and never allow the perfect to become the enemy of the good, we stand a good chance of losing that right now. And listen, it's certainly the insurrection attempt last year, but it's also what's taking place in Texas right now. Tens of thousands of mail ballots rejected by this state as we have forced people to match the ID with which they used to register to vote in the first place with the one that they want to use to vote right now. One of those 95-year-old World War II veterans who put his life on the line for this democracy, fighting fascism half a world away, was rejected three times in his attempt to vote in this state, in the very democracy that he made possible. So democracy is voting rights. Democracy is the ability to register. Democracy is the ability to freely choose those who will serve and represent you in positions of public trust. But democracy is also what this gentleman is talking about right now. The ability to gather in meetings like these and be kind enough to one another and to see things from somebody else's perspective that we might not otherwise have understood or to understand some of the things that we have we may be taking for granted right now. My ability to see a doctor or to be there for my kids who are in the public ed system right now or to advocate in a way that I have the freedom to do, others may not. And if we listen to them and empathize with them and show compassion, they're gonna do better. And when they do better, we all do better. I'm a big fan of when we all do better, we all do better. And that's gonna be the root of what we do in this administration. Thanks for asking the question. All right, Appreciate it. Here's our next question. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm a retired teacher, and I'm wondering if you and I just wanted to thank you so much for shining a light on education in Texas because it's in crisis and we have so many things that we need to be working on. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to thank both of you for what you do. One of the saddest things that we can hear as we're traveling the state of Texas is teachers who tell us that they're discouraging their kids from entering the profession. Retired teachers who remind us that they haven't had a cost of living adjustment since the year 2004. Imagine how much prices have gone up since 2004, even just in this last year. And these retired teachers who devoted themselves to us and our kids through public service, who were denied the ability to earn from Social Security because we were maybe worried at one time that they were going to get filthy rich on retirement as a public school teacher. They're the ones right now who are going to be telling their kids and grandkids about this profession. And we want them to be saying positive things because we've got to attract more of the best and brightest into these classrooms and into these roles right now. So I just want to publicly say thank you and then pledge myself to having your back every single day that I'm in that office to make sure that you're doing well and future generations of teachers do well. Thank you for being here. Same spot. I'll be the first to admit that I get a little confused by some of these commercials going on by all the politicians. What exactly is going on with our borders? And where's your stance on all of that? Thank you for asking. Um, and let me, let me lay down some context here. Um, I, I, I neglected to introduce her when I first came in, but my wife Amy is here. Um, where are you, Amy? This is Amy. And our, our, our son Henry, 11 years old. Yo, Henry. I, I introduced them because uh, we, we live on the U.S.-Mexico border in the city of El Paso, which is connected to, we have some El Pasoans here, um, way to go, which, which is connected to Ciudad Juarez, forming the largest binational community, at least in the Western Hemisphere, maybe anywhere in the world. It's about three million of us who share the Rio Grande River, live in the Rocky Mountains and the Chihuahuan Desert. We're very far from the centers of power, right? Um, in El Paso, we're closer to the state capitals of New Mexico and Arizona and Chihuahua and Colorado than we are to our own state capital. And Ciudad Juarez is in much the same position. But that mutual support that we have for one another 
has ensured our success, our strength, and also I want to argue our safety. El Paso, Texas has been ranked as one of, if not the safest city in the United States of America for most of the last 15 years. And that is not in spite of the fact that we are a city of immigrants. I would argue it is because of the fact that we are a city of immigrants. Those who have chosen us have made us stronger and safer and more successful than we would have been otherwise. Now, I want to lay that down because no one's more interested in the security of that community than those who live there. And I want to tell you, it is very safe. But I also want to acknowledge we have legitimate concerns at the border. When people are trafficking other human beings, when they are trafficking illegal drugs that can come in here, when we have people crossing and we're unaware that they're doing this in between ports of entry, that concerns me. And I think that concerns all of us. And so when people ask you, say, look, Beto understands the border. He lives there. He wants to ensure that anyone who comes to this country does so legally, that we have order and the rule of law, and that as Texans, we help to rewrite our immigration laws to reflect our values and our needs. And what is most important to us, not again as Democrats or Republicans, but as Texans. We know that there are people who want to come to this state, who will work jobs that probably your kids are not going to work. We want to make sure there's a legal path for them to do that and a legal path for them to return to their home country if that's what they want to do. And by the way, most of them do want to do that. We want to make sure that we prioritize family reunification. And we want to guarantee that anyone who's an asylum seeker or a refugee has a legal process that they can follow to attempt to claim asylum. It's not guaranteed. They may be denied. But right now, we're forcing them to live in squalor on the streets of Mexican border communities instead of following our own laws. That's what we are for. And listen, this is what we're against. Greg Abbott, instead of providing that order right now, is causing chaos. He has deployed 10,000 members of the Guard, including from communities like this one, forcing them to leave their families, their jobs, their careers, their communities, with 10 days notice for a one-year deployment to become part of a solution in search of a problem. Four of those Guard members in the last five months have taken their own lives. Two others have died as part of this mission from accidental deaths. None of them, none of them killed by an undocumented immigrant or anything or anyone coming over the border. Unless there is a real crisis and a real demand for their service, let's allow them to come home to their communities and to their families. Let's meet this challenge not with fear or with rhetoric, or stoking anxiety, but with the facts and the truth and the best leadership that we can muster here in the state of Texas. As governor, I want to reflect that. So thank you for asking the question. Okay, hey, this is going to be our last question. Thank you for running, first of all. Thank you. Uh, we, have, we have more than 4 million Texans that face hunger every day. We have single mothers skipping meals so they can feed their children. What are we going to do about it? Questions about hunger. Um, like many of you, Amy and I and Henry volunteered at our local food bank when the pandemic started because so many of those who were typically volunteering were older, more vulnerable, were not the ones that you wanted to have congregating in a warehouse and being exposed to COVID. And so very often younger people would step forward and take their places. The lines at the food bank in El Paso stretched more than two miles long for people to come in and get food. And it was folks who had lost their jobs, but it was also interesting to me, folks who still have their jobs, nurses who were in their scrubs, coming through, you know, in that line for hours upon hours, picking up food because they could not afford it on their salary. School teachers, people who worked at restaurants, fast food places like McDonald's, still in their uniform, having served food to others, unable to afford food for themselves. But the kicker for me, is that more than two years after this pandemic, the demand in El Paso has actually grown, not subsided since COVID first struck. And we know that to be the case across the state of Texas. The question was, what are we gonna do about this? Well, in a state where the minimum wage is still $7.25 an hour, no one working full time on that minimum wage can feed themselves, keep a roof over their head, and have enough to go forward every day without working a second or a third job or being on public assistance or going to one of these food pantries in our communities. 
we absolutely must raise that minimum wage and make sure that more people have connections to Weatherford College, to union jobs here, to provide training and world-class employment. We've got to make sure, I mentioned expanding Medicaid, we are the least insured state in the country. And not only does that mean that people with diabetes, with the flu, and we know that we lost a second grade school teacher in Weatherford in 2018 who didn't have enough money to pay for her flu medication, dying of curable cancers. Not only is that happening, but people who try to fund their own health care out of their own pocket are going into bankruptcy and significant debt and they're seen at those food pantries as well. So if we expand Medicaid and guarantee that more people can see a doctor without losing their home in the process, we're not only gonna be a healthier, better off community, we're gonna see fewer people dependent upon public assistance to move forward. These are not crazy extremist fringe ideas. These are not the purview of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. These are common sense, compassionate ideas that I think most Texans can get behind. We just need to have the political will reflected in the highest office in the land. And when we win this race, we will. Thank you for asking the question. Appreciate it. So, this being the year 2022, and so much of what people know about what's going on right now is delivered on social media. If you're willing, uh, Amy and Henry and I are going to be hanging out by this tree. We would love to snap a picture with you and then ask you to post that on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, um, if you are going to do a dance on TikTok. And, <laughs> and, and in your own words, as you post that picture, tell folks why you came out today. It doesn't have to be anything that I said. It could be what's most important to you. But when you do that, you validate that this is possible and you give people the permission to believe. And once that happens, there is no stopping us. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how we're gonna win this race. Thank you for coming out today. Really, really appreciate it. Gracias. Everybody, so unfortunately we won't do questions, but we'll do a quick picture. Have your phones ready. Thank you. Thank you. 
I know, so so this is our our our, our fifth request. Yeah. 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 No, I know, but you guys, you gotta, you gotta push hard, so we gotta get this done. Hey y'all, we only have time for pictures. 
There's no talking. Okay. Right, sorry. Thanks for the question. Thanks for teaching. Yeah. You got outed in front of everyone. Okay, look at that. One, two, three. All right, we're going to thank you. You all are my heroes. We got your back. Thank you. Oh, okay. Come on. Y'all have one. Oh, wait. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll come back and please spread the word. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming out. Here, one, two, three, perfect. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please post that, okay? It's going to get to a lot of folks. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Oh, you ready to come up next? Thank you. Come on up. Hey, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Hey, not bad. Y'all look over here. One, two, three. There you go. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks for coming out. One, two, three. All right, we're going to get it. I like the sound of that. Thank you. Spread the word. Hola. El gusto es mío. Gracias por estar. Spread the word. Let people know, okay? Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, thanks for coming out. Ready? Let's go. Oh, you're the picture. Well, no, I'm the holder. Oh, thank you. Huh? Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 Awesome. And are we connected? Yes. We are. I already connected with Nick. Awesome. Gorgeous. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Spread the word. All right, we're getting in. We're not Let's talking. Do Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Hey, thanks for coming out. Well, I'm going to take a selfie. This is my second time to be here. Oh, that's our best. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you. Hey, thanks for doing this. That's a good one. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We got a couple. Hey, come on over. All right. Thank you all so much. You appreciate you. One more quick selfie. You got it. That's good. Thank you. You all be well. Post those photos so we can get the word out. Thank you. Of course. Hey, thanks for doing this. Thanks for being here. All right, y'all, let's go here. Let it go. You take your picture off. You want your picture. Yeah, that's fine. All right, look around this. Look up here, Tally. One, two, <laughs> Thank you so much. Really good. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. 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 Hello, hey. Pinot County. Parker County for you. Thank you. Oh, I connected with y'all through your Facebook. So please keep it up and spread the word. You guys are next. And and it would do more good than almost anything else we could do. And there's Republicans. All right, here we go. Next picture. Come on up. Alright, y'all look around here. Ready? Okay. Alright, let's go over here. One, two, three. Awesome. Alright, we got it. Next. Okay, here we go. Okay. Spread the word, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Will you, you're in touch with the voters that we need. Alright, here we go. Keep it up. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Awesome. Hey. Well, oh, thank you. 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 Hey! 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 Hey!
post those photos. Hey, thanks for coming out. Amy, thank you both for being here. Hey, thanks for joining us. That's great, guys. Got it. Thanks, Cynthia, there are more people here Palo from Palo Pinto, Pinto than Parker County. <laughs> we got to do something about this. We got to come see you. We got to see you. Is what we got to do about it. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming out. Hi. Thanks for joining. Like, what happened? Appreciate it. All right, y'all. Look over here. Check over there. Ready? One, two, three. 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 I'll share it. I'll share it. Yeah. And then more organization. That's right. Okay. Love it. All right. You know what I'm going to do? That's right. Okay, good. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Thanks for coming out. You ready? Help us spread the word. I sure will. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Hi, thanks for being here. I'm glad this came out. It's worth the wait. Hey, thanks for asking that question. All right, look over here. Look over here. We got to teach you now. One, two, three. We got you. We got to make sure everyone's doing well. Yeah, and here we go. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, thanks for coming out. Ready? Let's go here. One, two, three. Help us spread the word. Thank you. Oh, thank you for saying that. That's awesome. And politics and prayer. Right? Well, we got to all do that. Yes. Thank you for being part of this. Yeah, spread the word. Hey, thanks for coming out. Thanks for being here. New Mexico. Yes. Love it. Always happy. My wife is from northern New Mexico. Or Lamy, outside of Santa Fe. Okay, I'm from Pecos. Oh, yeah. We're next door neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. I've been up there. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful country. Have a good one. We are so grateful. We all got your back. Okay, thank you. Hi. Thanks for coming out. I will. And look over here. Plan one, two, and they look at it. It looks like they're going to make out. I'm sorry, I got to keep everybody moving. I will. That's great. Hey, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Very nice. One, two, three. Beautiful. Thank you. Please keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kim Savage, and I just want to say thanks for working your ass off and visiting all these small towns. I love it. Thanks for wearing the uh, vintage belt with you. Thanks for coming out. Beautiful. Next, come on up. Thanks for the word. You're up. Come on up. Here we go. Chris, up. Hey. Here we got two. Thanks for coming out. Sure that up. Thank you. Perfect. Got it. Thank you. Next. Please post that photo. Spread the word. Thank you. Here we go. You did. What city? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we've been there. Thank you both for Everybody volunteering. Look at me. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Perfect, guys. Appreciate Come it. Spread the word. Hey. Thank you for being here. We chased you down at Mineral Wells. Actress from Anne, because she wants to go up. Look at me. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Awesome. And there we go. Beautiful. Good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. And that's our grace. And, 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 and Jackson Brown. Well, right, you if you can use it, 
Thank you so much. I will then. Thank you. Thanks for the question you asked earlier. I thought it was great. All right, y'all. We have three minutes. That's it. Oh, you got it. Got it. Hey, thanks for being with us. Yeah, I'm grateful for what you all are doing. Thanks for what you all do. Yeah. Keep it up. Yeah. And then, Come on and then send us up. orders. So we yeah, thank you. Here we go, right over here. Fine. One, two, three. I have four more sisters that will work for you too. So. Let's get them all. Let's get them all. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Crystal Mason. Oh, look okay, up great. here. Right. Yeah, would you bring it? Yeah. Thank you. So nice. Hi there, Annie. I wanted to come, but I was running. No question. No question. No. Let's just give it a break. Sure. Oh. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. 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 Right on. Thank you so much. I look forward to working with you on this one. Look up here, Annie. I look forward to volunteering and helping you get elected. However, Thank you. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing it. Yes, sir. Thanks for stepping up. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Spread the word. Thank you. Thank you. You volunteered as well? Yes. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Y'all get close. Ready? Look up here. Bring the feet Okay. There you go. Please spread the word and post that Come on up here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you.